Joined now by the mayor of St. Paul, Minnesota, Melvin Carter. And mayor, thank you so much for, for spending the time and talking to us tonight. I know you're incredibly busy, and this is maybe one of the busiest times uh, as, as mayor that you've seen so far. What can you tell us about that semi-truck, and what's your understanding of what's happened tonight? Uh, this is certainly uh, a, a busy time for us and a really traumatic week, uh, as obviously there's a lot of tension and rage uh, over the video that we saw last week uh, of Mr. George Floyd's killing. Uh, we were actually watching uh, here from our uh, emergency operations center. Uh, we saw that play out on the news as well, a very scary scene. Uh, we don't ha we have more questions and answers at this point, uh, but glad no one uh, seems to be injured. Uh, glad it seems not to have been uh, the catastrophic catastrophic event that it could have been uh, and hopeful that uh, cooler heads prevail on the night uh, so that we can have uh, a, a calmer night again. We hope for that. Now, Mayor, for a third night, a curfew will be in effect tonight in the Twin Cities, including that National Guard presence on the street. Was the decision to bring in the Guard helping the situation, in your opinion? Uh, yes, I think the decision to bring the, in the guard, uh, we requested the guard uh, on Thursday, I think, in St. Paul when we first started seeing uh, the, the, the destructive activity that we've seen. And again, I want to uh, make a distinction between the peaceful protesters uh, who want to speak loud and clear that Mr. Floyd should still be alive, uh, that all four of those officers uh, involved in his death ought to be held accountable, uh, and that we have deep work to do as a, as a country uh, to change the course so we don't see this happening over and over and over again. The National Guard has been very helpful to help us secure spaces so that our officers uh, can uh, go engage, go help protect the rights uh, of our protesters to peacefully protest uh, while enforcing those kind of basic life, health, and safety uh, ex expectations that we have in our community. You know, Mayor, you corrected a statement you had made earlier this weekend that all of those arrested for violence, the majority of those arrested for violence in St. Paul were out of state, saying you had received inaccurate information. I bring this up because of that news our Marcus Moore just reported on what appears to be an explosive device that did not go off. What are you hearing about how coordinated some of these more violent incidents have become? You know, there really seems to be a, a group of folks uh, here uh, who are, are intent on breaking windows and starting fires and, and, and uh, creating destruction in our community. And I'll tell you, whether they sleep in St. Paul or in Minnesota or somewhere out of town, uh, one thing I know is that if you're for the destruction of our local businesses, if you're for the destruction of uh, generationally owned restaurants, if you're for the destruction of, of uh, uh, community stores owned by immigrants and refugees, refugees. Uh, you're not from here. You're not a part of the community that I recognize as my community. And, and you must be an outsider because you're not driven by a passion for the well-being, the health and safety of this community and the children within it. Mayor, finally, how can you express that anger? And what do you tell those in your community that, that, that do sort of want to have these demonstrations that at times turn violent? I think that's one of the most important questions. You know, as we see this video, this gruesome and disgusting video of uh, Mr. Floyd's uh, killing, uh, and know that that video doesn't stand alone, that it stands in a long line of videos that we've seen, of names that we've seen, of hashtags, uh, of men that we've uh, declared and uh, demanded justice for. and. Frankly, that too often those demands have gone unanswered as we see uh, very few charges filed, as we see very few uh, convictions brought against people who wrongfully, who we all know have wrongfully taken black lives. Uh, the, the anger is uh, understandable. In some ways, the anger is the only human response. The question is, what are we going to do with it, right? And so in St. Paul, uh, we're not asking people, for, we are asking people for peace, but I'm being very clear. We're not asking people for patience. And we're definitely not asking people for passivism. We're asking people to take the fire, take the energy, uh, that nuclear energy that's consumed our country for the past week uh, and channel it towards not destructing our, our, our community, not being destructive towards our local businesses. Uh, but we have to destroy our systemic racism. We have to destroy uh, those kind of uh, uh, inequities in our community. We have to destroy poverty and homelessness. And we certainly have seen that we have to destroy the legal, uh, the 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 uh, the technical uh, we have to destroy the 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 uh, court precedents uh, and definitely all of those kind of uh, uh, things written into police union contracts that make it so difficult to hold people accountable uh, when black lives are lost wrongfully.
Mayor Carter, we thank you for your time. You are preaching nonviolence, peace, but not patience. We hope you have a safe night tonight. We thank you for your time. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.